I think it's kind of like a conversation of like LeBron versus Michael Jordan. Some of these savage lifters of the past, they're like insurance salesmen or <laughs> they had, you know, some other type of job and, and lifters today, they have, there's a lot of lifters that have jobs and families, but for the majority of what I was experiencing when I was competing is, uh, most of the individuals didn't have a typical nine to five job. And most of them, if not almost all of them, it was very rare that they were married. It was very rare that they had children. Not that you can't do those things, <laughs> but it just throws another wrinkle into it. But nowadays with like social media, I think somebody can build up and then they can kind of take like, Hey, I already did all this stuff. Like our boy, big Ray, like he could just kind of move on and like do other shit mm -hmm. and everyone's going to follow, uh, whatever the hell he does. Cause he's so popular. He's lifted some crazy weights. Uh, hopefully that guy doesn't need to have a real job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, actually, uh, posted something about, uh, like I saw, I saw a condom on the ground at, uh, one of the factories I worked at and, uh, a bunch of people were so like taken back by the fact that I actually have a nine to five job. Um, I like, I could, they're like, you work in a factory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So they're like industrial laundry plants and I do the chemistry for them. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chemist by trade. <laughs> and <laughs> not not quite like stories get awfully mm. peculiar yes but uh yeah a lot of people are like oh like you actually work for a living like yeah i mean i could live off of just sponsorships and uh like winnings from meets but i think i would get bored with that to be honest it makes sense though it's yeah. like that looks like a hydra logo on your hat <laughs> remember what captain america would happen to him on oh, hydra shit. Hydra. I super see serum. I see, what's, I see what's going on mm -hmm. here. He's a chemist, Hydra. How'd you get into chemistry? Did you like, um, you have like a superhero story? Did you like fall into like some <laughs> fucking plasma or something? No, it's actually uh, <laughs> a super nerdy story. I got into chemistry because I was in an AP chem class in high school and our science Olympia team needed someone from the chemistry. Science <laughs> Olympia <What>? team. Sick. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, all right, like I'll do it. It'll get on my resume. And then I ended up taking like, there's like a state competition and I took fourth in it. And I was mm. like, oh, I'm, I'm good at chemistry. Like, I'll stick with this. Wow. Yeah. Has that kind of stuff just always clicked well for you? Is it, and is it uh, hereditary in some way, you think? Um, I don't know if I'd say like, it, it has like clicked very well. Um, like compared to my siblings, I have a sister and a brother. We kind of joke that uh, I'm the blue collar. My brother's like the white collar. Like he, he did really well with like, reading literature um geography kind of stuff like that whereas i did a lot more of like uh science and math mm -hmm. and then my sister was kind of like a balance between the two before we continue down that route i want to know because some people are probably looking up the numbers when we were talking about ed Cone, mm -hmm. right the goat and yourself right you've probably thought about what would be the numbers needed to potentially put you over mm -hmm. what would what what is do you have that goal is there a goal there? Is there some numbers that you need to be able to potentially? Uh, uh, hey guys, you like cereal. I like cereal. Let's not eat the bad stuff though. That's why we've partnered with Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon has number one, amazing macros, zero grams of sugar, four grams of carbs, 14 grams of protein, and 140 calories per serving. You're not getting all the icky sugar that you get from normal cereal. Magic mm -hmm. Spoon is the way to go. That's why we love it and it fits our diet. Andrew, how can people get it? Absolutely. You guys got to head over to magicspoon.com slash power project. You guys will see the variety pack. That's four different flavors and it's really an awesome way to kind of dip your toe into the cereal bowl. So that way you guys can figure out which flavor you like the most. Most. And when you go there, you're actually going to receive $5 off that variety pack. Again, magicspoon.com slash power project links to them down in the description. Let's get back to the video. It's, it's tough. Cause I think it's kind of like a conversation of like LeBron versus Michael Jordan. where like, there's nothing like LeBron can do that. You wouldn't still have a very large group of people saying like, Oh, Michael Jordan is better. Mm -hmm. So I think like, no matter what, I'll never be able to like, surpass ed cohen but i think there's like numbers i can hit to like put me in the conversation um i think like uh like we talked about like a 800 squat 600 bench 900 deadlift mm -hmm. at 90 would be um a really big one how close then, are you to that uh what is that that's 13 more pounds on your deadlift yeah so i'm uh i'm close on bench and deadlift but mm -hmm. squats Got take, a ways to go. Might, might take a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
you know, Ed Cohn's done some ridiculous stuff in the gym. Have you, <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen some of the training footage. Have you ever just thought of like, I don't know, let me just during this training cycle, let me just go for some of these lifts or you don't want to get too outside of what you normally focus on. Um, I mean, I've kind of played around with, uh, like some stiff bar deadlifts to kind of emulate that. But, uh, I don't, I don't look at it as like individual lifts as like, or gym lifts and think <laughs> I want to hit those. Maybe, maybe when I get up to like 220 and I'm more like in his weight class. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. That's another thing to think about is he was, uh, heavier and shorter. <laughs> Oh, that little God. that little motherfucker. <laughs> I don't think I could ever match like his his squat numbers. Though. Yeah, he was he was uh he was one of a kind. But you you know you see like really weird unique stuff from that guy. Like his arms are really long, mm -hmm. and so people were like, "Oh, Ed never really benched that much." But some of the competitions that he did where he broke all time world records in total, he the only thing he wore was a squat suit and knee wraps. He didn't wear a bench shirt. He didn't wear anything on the deadlift, and he still went out and like murdered everybody. And I think that people forget. I believe his best bench press, like in, at least in training, was like a 585 bench press. There's video footage of him benching 555 for a double uh, with a close grip. But I think that you have lifted more than that. I'm not sure about your competition bench, uh, where that's been. Uh, my best gym bench is 584. And then I, try, I tried a touch and go 600, and it was, it was not close. It was a no-go. It was no-go. But uh, I have a bet going with, um, if you know... Pull my beard on Instagram. Yeah. Ty, he, uh, we have a bad. Uh, he's fun. First one, yeah, he's a really fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to laugh, go to his Instagram. Go to his page, please. <laughs> uh, but, or if you're questioning your sexuality, maybe. Still, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you, <laughs> but, uh, we have a, we have a bad going though. Mine is always in question. <laughs> for, for, first one to hit 600, the loser has to get their nipple pierced. Mm. So, oh, hope, wow. Yeah. You better hurry, bro. Cause I know. He's getting close. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Damn. So you mentioned something in the gym that I, and maybe I haven't asked this question enough, but I think I have. And, uh, you know, I owned a magazine company called Power Magazine for years where I interviewed the top power lifters um, every single month for years on end, uh, rubbed elbows with many all-time world record holders, and they're all a little, a little bit different. Um, but I have not heard one of them say what you said to me in the gym today, and I think it's really interesting. I said, how often do you miss a lift? And I sat back and I was like, he's going to say what I think he's going to say. He's going to say, I never miss a lift because I lift with perfect form. It's all about technique, bro. And uh, the technique police are not in your uh, training program. You don't mind missing a lift here or there. Uh, yeah, I'll usually miss, like during a prep, uh, I hit like a, a single on squat bench deadlift every week and I typically end up missing one on each of the lift during uh, maybe not squat so much more so bench and deadlift but I usually miss one during a prep it's just usually I go in with a, n a number in my mind and for the most part I can kind of guess right about like how it's going to feel that day but sometimes I get too into that number and I know I'm off mentally that day but yeah still don't want to be a bitch i think it says some interesting things about your personality you know number one you're not afraid to go for it which is really cool do you know in advance that you're going to go that heavy or no uh usually so i kind of i write out like a training plan for 12 weeks um like when i do i i start with like what i want to hit for that that meat. I just picture it and it's super simple. It just says like deadlift and it says heavy. And then next week it says heavier and then heavier the well, next week. Well, it's funny because like all, all I write out actually is like the singles and then I kind of like wing it on the rep days. Um, I kind of have like a general idea like, oh, I want to do like a three by eight for like four weeks. And You're like frustrating so many people. There's so many people yeah, right seriously. now that, that started out with a pen and they just threw it across the room like, fuck man, I don't know. <laughs> Guys winging shit. Yeah. Hey, wait, before you go, you got this far. That means that you've enjoyed the heat that we're continuing to bring you. So listen, listen, like the video, comment something down below. We'll reply back and subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you the heat. Seriously, do it. Love you. Bye.